My girlfriend's rules are ruining our vacation. I 48 am have been dating my girlfriend Kelly, 50 f for nearly two years. We are currently on vacation with her son Ryan 23 m and his girlfriend Emily, 23 f, along with my sister, brother-in-law niece and her boyfriend. To provide some context I know Ryan very well. I've known him for nearly a decade as I was his coach in high school and we became very close. He is practically like a son to me. Ryan has also been dating Emily since high school. When we were planning this trip, Kelly stated that Ryan was not allowed to share a room with Emily. Initially, I thought she was joking, but she was serious. I know Ryan is sexually active as he has openly talked about it since he was a teenager. I agreed to a request, and the official plan was that Ryan and my niece's boyfriend would share a room, while my niece and Emily would share another room. Obviously, that room arrangement wasn't going to last. Everyone was fine with the technical room arrangement, the girls even had a slumber party one of the first nights. Ryan picked up that this was just to appease Kelly. I handed him his keys and said, give the second one to whoever, and he immediately gave it to Emily. My niece did the same in giving her spare key to her boyfriend. This is exactly what everyone thought would happen. Anyway, somehow Ryan had left his wallet in our room last night. Instead of bringing it to him at breakfast or knocking on his door, or even shooting him a text, Kelly used the key in it to walk into his room. She saw things she didn't want to see. To be fair, they weren't having sex. What was described to me was that they were both nude, covered up at least on their bottom halves, but they were snuggled up and he was running his fingers on her back. This sounds like how most loving couples are after having sex. She was in hysterics. She refused to come to breakfast. I told her that was fine, but she wasn't gonna make this a big deal on our vacation. Emily very sweetly apologized to me and said she knows how Kelly can be, which frankly made me feel terrible. When I went to retrieve Kelly from the room, she was still in a mood. She expressed to me how upset she was, and I told her be thankful all she saw was the snuggling and not the actual act. That made her really upset, and I told her she was overreacting. Ryan is an adult who has been with the same woman for years. She has confided in me before that she doesn't like Emily, but frankly, I've never seen her do anything wrong. She's a bit punky and Ryan is a bit more preppy, but she's a sweet person who cares deeply for Ryan and vice versa. She called me every name in the book when I told her she was overreacting. She called him a child and accused me of taking Emily's side over her. I'm genuinely concerned. I've even considered the possibility that she forgot to bring some mood-regulating medication because I have never seen her act like this, and I'm being shunned by her for being an asshole. Currently, we're all sitting on the beach while Kelly mopes inside. I wanted to add some relevant information that I see asked in the comments. So Ryan and Emily live together and have for I want to say five years. Ryan paid for his and Emily's portion of this trip. When Kelly brought up the not sharing a room as I was booking it, I thought she was joking and just laughed. It wasn't until we were checking in and I was passing out keycards that she reminded me of what she said, and at that point, instead of arguing about it in the lobby, I said fine and handed people their keys and told them to do whatever they want, I just wanted a drink and eat some fruit on the beach. She is in therapy and is aware of her unhealthy attachment to her son. She does take medication S for mood regulation, however, I'm not sure if she currently has them. I think that's all for now. If I see anything else, I will add it. I'm sorry I can't get to all of the comments. There's a lot of them and I'm on vacation. Relevant comments. Superflex. NTA. Yes, she is overreacting. Ryan is far from being a child. He's a 23-year-old man and has been in a stable relationship for at least five years. Your girlfriend shouldn't have even been trying to police them via the room assignments in the first place. OOP. Yeah, he is definitely not a child. 
They've been dating for closer to eight years if not mistaken. I agree. It was a bit odd to me, and I suppose I should have questioned it more at the time as opposed to just shrugging it off. Chance at 3,606. Ente? Your girlfriend sounds kind of like a nut job with no respect for her son. Hopefully this is a one-off thing, but considering Emily said, I know how Kelly can be, I am guessing it is not. Hold firm on this one. Defend Ryan and Emily as much as you have to. They did nothing wrong and should feel zero guilt, embarrassment, or any other negative feeling for this. OOP. She's usually pretty great, though she's been cold albeit polite towards Emily for as long as I've been around. I'm not sure if something happened, but they don't get along well. With that being said, I do think I'll stick up for them on this one. I don't think I'm going to waver. This was uncomfortable for them too, and I don't want their time to be ruined because of it. Farty Astino. She returned the wallet that way so that she could catch them doing it, and she could feel wronged and offended. OOP on if his girlfriend is overly attached to her son. I don't think she's ever used the word stealing, but she did get in an argument with him maybe a year or so ago, about how all he does is spend time with Emily. I can't be certain, though I doubt that argument was the first of its kind. Ravenkali. It's called enmeshment. Go on over to Justnamil and read the pinned reading resources. Amazing Reality 2980. Ente Kelly sounds like the child in this situation, throwing a little temper fit because she isn't getting her way. Her son is an adult. He has sex. She needs to get over herself and let her adult son be an adult and make his own decisions. Kelly is controlling and obsessive and needs to stop because she is destroying her relationship with her son. And if he marries Emily, she's destroying her relationship with her future daughter-in-law. And what's going to happen when they have kids? Do you think Kelly is going to be welcomed into Emily's home to see her grandkids after Kelly treats her like a slut and pariah? Probably not. The original post and this update are a bit long so I opted to write the update in a new post altogether. Apologies in advance for the lengthy post. First and foremost, thank you to everyone who commented. I appreciated the helpful comments and was entertained by the less helpful ones. Even if I didn't reply, I did read every single one. Before I get started, there are a few things I wanted to clear up. I know Kelly is mentally ill, however, in the nearly two years we've been together, I never really noticed anything particularly concerning. Her relationship with Ryan has gotten a lot better both from what I can see and from what Ryan and I have talked about. As for her relationship with Emily, she was never particularly rude to her, but they've also never been close. Kelly is in regular therapy and is medicated for mood regulation. Additionally, I am very, very careful when it comes to enabling behavior for anyone, including Kelly. The reason I took her comment about them staying in separate rooms as a joke is because I genuinely thought it was a joke. That was a ridiculous statement to make. I was sitting at my desk booking the rooms, she had made that comment, I chuckled, and then we started talking about something else. I had no reason to believe that she genuinely felt that way. When she reminded me of her rule in the hotel lobby, I looked at her like she was crazy. She didn't make a scene, and frankly, I was exhausted, so I just gave up and handed people the pairs of key cards and told them to do whatever they wanted, and within the hour, I was asleep on the beach. I spoke to Ryan before anyone else, apologizing on Kelly's behalf. Since I've known him the longest of the young couple, I figured it'd be easier to talk to him. He was surprisingly understanding of the situation, and apologized back to me for starting this whole thing, which I let him know was a ridiculous thing to apologize for. Before I even had the chance, he himself brought up emotional incest, and said that that was something she was really bad about when he was a teenager, and still needed to work on now that he was an adult out of the house. I spoke with Emily and the conversation went similarly. 
Ryan has always been very strict on his boundaries surrounding how his mother treats Emily, usually leaving her alone for a few days or weeks until she is able to be respectful towards her again. When I asked them both if they knew why Emily was disliked by Kelly, neither of them knew exactly. Emily did suggest that right before Ryan moved out, Kelly had walked in on them actually having sex. Her reaction was even more extreme than this one. It had just graduated high school, meaning Ryan was about three months from 19, and Emily was newly 18. This argument caused him to move in with Emily's family, which according to Ryan was extremely tough for Kelly. That event practically thrust her into needing to deal with her attachment issues and trauma because Ryan told her he would no longer be in contact with her unless she started going to therapy and working on herself. The day of the post, Kelly was able to get an emergency appointment with her therapist. After that, she had calmed down significantly, and I was able to actually talk to her. While the whole talk was far too personal for me to go into detail about, I want to talk about a few points. The first thing I asked was what the actual hell was going on. While her unhealthy attachment to her son is at play, she told me the situation was triggering and sent her spiraling, then referenced the circumstances regarding Ryan moving out, which we had never spoken about before. She has a lot of trauma surrounding being a single mother, and certainly has abandonment issues. Ryan's father was a brief, few-week fling who she thought would want to stay with her to raise a baby, and ended up leaving her alone. I decided to ask her why she disliked Emily. At first, she said it was because Emily was loud-mouthed and had Ryan under her thumb. I asked her to rephrase more constructively, and she said Emily was opinionated and Ryan would do anything for her. While I adore Emily, I acknowledge she is certainly opinionated, but she is also very intelligent, respectful, and polite. Additionally, Ryan hangs on every word she says, he has told me himself that she's always the most interesting person in the room to him. That's not to say they are perfect, in fact I saw them bicker about a plate of fruit yesterday, but they are great together. I told Kelly she should be proud that she raised a son who loves and appreciates his significant other so much, that he openly admits he would do anything for her. That lightened her mood significantly. Interestingly, her therapist suggested she talk to her primary care doctor, or obstetrics slash gynecology about menopause, which was what another commenter suggested. Her therapist mentioned that her medication might need to be adjusted if that's the case, as the extreme reaction was out of character, and she has been dealing with other mood-related issues. Initially, I was not going to ask about what medication she forgot. As someone who is on antidepressants, Whenever I would express rational anger, some toxic people in my life would immediately dismiss it, claiming I haven't taken my meds. I absolutely hate that. With that being said, I decided it was best for me to ask which medication she forgot. To no one's shock, it was indeed a mood-regulating medication. Her sister is joining us for the second week, so she will be bringing her medication Finally, Ryan and Emily had joined us in a conversation. It was filled with a lot of apologies, a little bit of tears, and a surprising amount of hugging. From what I gather, this is not the first conversation of its kind between the three. One thing that was spoken about was how Kelly ended up with Ryan's wallet in the first place. Ryan is not someone who forgets their wallet or their keys or phone or any other personal item. There was a brief argument about whether or not Kelly took his wallet, but she denied this, and Emily suggested it just fell out of his pocket when he laid on the couch. The biggest topic of conversation was Kelly opening the door with no invitation. She was not able to give a rational reason for doing so, and finally agreed with Emily when she had said that Kelly just wanted to catch them off guard. Ryan also put Kelly in her place as far as boundaries go, which I have seen him too but before but am always impressed by, considering I remember when he felt like he had to just let his mom do whatever she wanted so that she was happy. Kelly accepted responsibility and spoke rather openly about her conversation with her therapist, which led to a lot of compassion and understanding from Ryan and Emily. Emily expressed her gratitude for Kelly accepting responsibility, 
and even suggested they get a drink together. It was generally agreed upon that this entire situation was ridiculous and that everyone just wanted to enjoy their vacation. Kelly finally gathered herself enough to join us all for our vacation. I feel at ease knowing I can finally, actually relax. Since then our days have been filled with drinks, beach, good food, and naps, and I couldn't be happier. Relevant comments. Middle-aged Bob Witch. Very well handled up, and props to everyone for talking it all out and moving through it. Yes, I'm Reddit for Rumble. Good on Ryan for setting boundaries, but I feel bad that he's had to deal with an emotional incestuous mother his entire life. Hope his therapy is helping him deal with that. Sinner Ixum. Sounds like things ended relatively well. But I expect this will be a recurring issue for the foreseeable future. Especially if she ever forgets her medications again. The fact that she still dislikes Emily because... She's opinionated just like Kelly. 2. Ryan cares deeply for her is a pretty big indicator that the emotional incest is still extremely strong. Based on your post, it still doesn't seem like Kelly realizes the reason Ryan had to leave the house was because of how controlling slash overbearing she was. I would think that after five years of therapy, Ryan 18 to 23, that Kelly would be more in control of her actions and emotions related to Ryan and Emily. Swifty Rick D. 40, 2069. At first she said it was because she was loud-mouthed and had Ryan by the balls. I told her to rephrase in a more productive was, and she said she was opinionated, and Ryan would move mountains for her. I love you for this right here. You seem like a very understanding and thoughtful dude. I feel like you handled this like a professional. No notes, keep being awesome, my dude. Edit. I told Kelly she should be proud that she raised a son that loves and appreciates his significant other so much that he has openly admitted that he would do anything for her. That lightened up her mood significantly. Thought Tear Diplomat. Catwin 52. He has told me himself that she's always the most interesting person in the room to him, is some sweet as shit. Makes my eyes go glossy. She should definitely be proud of the man she's raised, not battling it. But I get how difficult this situation can be. Glad to hear there's been some levity and love spread through here. Makes my heart warm.